So I've got negative minutes to reach my gate. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna shoot a vlog, obviously. How good do you have to be to teach drums? Do you need a college degree? A ton of gigs? Maybe you need to be a touring pro. Or somebody who is on the cover of Modern Drummer. Or maybe none of that matters, and it's only about how good you sound. Sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. And cheddar baguette. And cheddar baguette. Get to your gate early, they said. Worry about food later, they said. But how good is good enough? Are we talking Insta Chopper, Insta Chopper? Or sneaky Insta Chopper? Or maybe chops don't matter and you're the pocket king. You did it, you guys, Charlie Seven. Still looking for boarding. And say we could agree on a definition of good. All right, all right. If you're watching this video, maybe you're just curious. But maybe you're also somebody who's considered teaching, or is considering teaching in the future. And I'm gonna give you some kind of answer, or at least a way to think about it. Today on 8020, how good do you... Oh, we already said that, right. Cool, roll the music. Very quick, how did this start? Well, some of you know how this started. Let's just say there's a proliferation of people giving drum lessons online. Sure, you've seen it. And let's also say there are some people asking if that's such a good thing. Go on, say something clever. If so low a bar to call yourself a teacher is making the landscape better for a potential student or worse. Just asking questions, mind you. Some of you know. And others pondering whether some of us hanging a shingle on the internets are not the tippy top of the talent mountain. Some might even say, Mid-level. Some of you know. So let's just say I observed some of these goings on, bided my time, thought deeply, and I gotta tell you this is gonna be fun because nothing fires me up quite like being able to make a video about something I've got a little defiant rage about, a little you're not the boss of me. And tempting though it is to dunk, and damn it is tempting, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do the well-reasoned argument thing. With a little spice, with a little spice, I'm gonna give you mm, three things to think about when it comes to who should teach. You know the crazy thing is this is scripted, so I could have just gone back and filled in the right number, but I'm too lazy to do even that. But in the neighborhood of three things. But what kind of things? How do I know if I should- Shh. Three things. Shh. Three things. Thing one. Who determines who should teach the drums? Are we saying that there should be some kind of governing body or like a professional association you have to join? Which is fine. Or are we saying when you look yourself in the mirror in the morning, like dead in the eye, do you know you have what it takes? Because the truth is, these days, it doesn't matter. You can have a degree, a certification, be able to sleep at night teaching, not be able to sleep at night. And if a student hands you money, you're a teacher. Is that a bad thing? Should we have a gatekeeper instead? Hold that thought. Time to move on to the second. Yeah. Thing number two, forget number one for now and say we're gods, like Roman gods, and we do get to decide. Johnny down there is teaching and he doesn't measure up? Smite him! Okay, but now the problem becomes, what criteria would we use to figure out who should be teaching and who shouldn't? And this is harder than you think. Touring pro? Well, a lot of touring pros don't have a good handle on how they do the things they do or remember what it's like to be a beginner. Some do. Some are excellent. Some don't. You also run the risk of missing the John Donahers. Should we order breadsticks? The people who never got playing accolades, who might produce great students nonetheless because they know how to coax performance out of people. You could also define success too loosely, like say, student life satisfaction after five years. Well, maybe they're satisfied because they finally fired their shitty teacher. There's a middle ground, but I'll get to that. Ooh, just thought of what my things are. They're things that make determining who should teach more difficult. Or more difficult than it seems. I should go back and add that to the script, but I won't. Okay, thing three. Even if we could appoint a royal committee to decide and determine perfect criteria for what makes a good teacher, and we all run the world's drummers through this application process, where do we cap things? Like, what percentile do you have to be in to qualify? Top 1%? Top 1 tenth of 1%? Let me throw a few things at you. First, music is not zero sum. That means that unlike lakeside real estate, you don't take a slot away from somebody by becoming a better drummer. We don't grade on a curve. If 50% of the world's drummers suddenly sounded like Justin Tyson overnight, that wouldn't make that level any less impressive. Second thing, music is subjective. 
People misinterpret that to mean there is no good or bad, man. In which case, why are we practicing? Why not just start identifying as good? Of course there's ability level. But the way you achieve flow state, make some musical sentences and paragraphs, prose or poetry, and connect with an audience might be very different from how I do it. Or Eloy Casagrande. Or Brian Blade. So if 50% of the world's teachers met this standard, there'd be no reason to throw them out of the guild just because we only take the top 1%. Excommunicado. So I threw a lot at you and I want to stop to summarize. Who should be teaching the drums? Just anybody? And I gave you three things that complicate that question. First, who's deciding? Are we creating a gatekeeping association or laws? What happens to somebody if they try to teach without the blessing of the guild? Exile from the tribe? Ostracization? Second, how are we grading these teachers? Playing ability? Gigs? Those all have issues. Third, but we need a way to grade. Because otherwise we're just saying, get me the best, when the best is arbitrary and relative. If this seems confusing, I'll try to make it simple in a minute. But just think for a minute about how nuanced that is compared to some of the pat social media statements about this. All these people hanging shingles teaching the drums online. I don't know, bro. I don't know. How would we tell? And who's deciding? And yet, I kind of agree. Yeah, the whole two sides -y thing. Johnny, two sides. Do we want people who are taking students' time and money to clear some kind of standards bar? Well, if I had a kid who was studying drums, I sure would. But let's talk about the thing that's so far been completely absent in this discussion. Ways to measure. A teacher is good if they're good at making X metric go up and to the right. Like how fast you run the 100 meter dash. Doesn't matter how much race experience you have or what schools you went to. Stopwatch, track, how fast. And there is a metric I'd propose for teaching the drums, though it's not as cut and dry as a stopwatch. But it's sure better than all those proxy indicators, like how many gigs you've got or where you went to school. Are you ready? Did your students get results? And do they feel better about their playing? That's it. Think about it. That conserves everything everybody's worried about. Why are we afraid of mid-level players teaching the drums? Because maybe they don't know enough about what it's like being good blah blah, and the students won't achieve results. Why are we worried about anybody being able to hang a shingle? Because maybe somebody gets in there who isn't good at getting student results. And I do think we should have some standards about who's qualified, based on what type of results their students get. And this also captures things criteria like how famous you are or don't capture. Like how patient are you? How empathetic? How good at getting students to trust you? And other things like the curse of knowledge. How well do you remember what it was like on the other side of the ability chasm? So you can empathize with your students. But let's go back to who gets to decide. Because I've been using a lot of we shoulds. Does that mean I think there should be a professional association or a guild? In a word, no. And here's why. Let the students decide. Ooh, he's a free market libertarian. No, no. We need the FAA because by the time a consumer discovers somebody in the maintenance department of an airline, deep in a hangar away from view, cut a corner, it's too late. We need the EPA because without regulation, companies aren't going to tell you how much they pollute, so you can make an informed consumer choice with the power of the purse. Ooh, did I just get political? Google Moloch. Just Google it. Anyway, drum lessons are different. There's a ton of choice, and potential students can see who can play and who can't, and even try free instructional materials like my three three video mini course. Practically brand new, off the presses, 40 minutes of high resolution video with transcriptions, all sequence instruction, and going deep, unlike the stuff I share on YouTube. Download it free by clicking the link below the player. Whew, that was good. I'm usually heavy handed with those, but so by the time a student invests money with a teacher, they likely already know they've gotten some results. Oh, and here's the other thing. That same internet that allows this, there's no barrier to anyone anymore. Anyone can teach. Yeah, that. It also just happens to be a video medium where you mostly can't fake it if you can't play. If anything, we're getting more consumer transparency and more competition in the process. Ooh, did I just sound red state? That sounded a little So, how good do you have to be to teach the drums? I think you should be really good at getting people to their goals. And finally, I'll confess, I think that probably takes a certain level of player. Because before that point in your development, you're not really gonna know what it's like to play at a high level. So how do you communicate that to your mm. But you just said if somebody gets results for their students, it doesn't matter. Even your eye for ability can be fooled by bias, but results don't lie. You know what? He's right. Even if somebody doesn't sound what I'd consider up to par, if they're getting really amazing results for their students, and yeah, in real life, let the students decide. But also, can you look yourself in the mirror? In all seriousness, this has been a hoop. Thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. And if you made it to the end of this video and you've got a constructive comment, 
I'd love for you to leave it in the comments section. And remember, you can get that three video mini course just by clicking below. It's been real, you guys always enjoy these. See you again real soon in another lesson of the week.